What's up guys, I'm Brian Lovett, AKA B-Love. Today we're gonna to talk about that last piece of the puzzle. We're gonna talk about air filters and coronavirus masks and what you need to actually block out a virus. Let's get into it. As most of you know, as most of you have been following along, I've been printing out these 3D printed coronavirus masks that have PETG, TPU, they're flexible, they have these great clips. This is the bowl of air design, so if you haven't checked that out, check it out. The guys who made this, amazing human beings, and they're pouring their heart and souls into this stuff, so just great people in general. I had the pleasure of speaking to them, and they also gave me some tips on the filter material. So let's talk about what makes a good filter for a 3D printed mask. Now, if we're talking about air filters and 3D printed masks, it helps to take a step back and look at the science of this and understand the scales that we're dealing with. Now, if you think about a millimeter, a micron is a thousand times smaller than a millimeter. A nanometer is a thousand times smaller than a micron or a micrometer. The coronavirus itself is about 120 nanometers. So think about that for scale right there. Now, if we're doing some quick math, we need a filter that can filter out 0.12 microns. That's small. Now, if we think about your typical home air filter, furnace filters like this, and this one's better than most, but your typical air filter for a furnace at home filters out about three to 10 microns, basically dust particles, and that's about it. Now, a really high end, a really good air filter for your home furnace might filter out one to three microns. This is things like dust and pollen and spores. So it does a better job, but we're still not anywhere near that 0.12 micron that you have to be to filter out things like a virus. Now, one way they rank and rate air filters is by a MERV rating. And no, I'm not talking about your drunk uncle MERV that says too many weird things at Thanksgiving. I'm talking about the MERV rating for a filter, which means how small the particles are that it filters out. You see, most home air filters are in the five to six range, sometimes seven and eight. If you get a really high end filter like this one right here, this one is a MERV 12. Now this will filter out things like smoke, pollen, dander. It does a really good job for your home. And, and in fact, this is oftentimes better than getting a home air purifier because this is gonna be purifying all of the air in your home. So I definitely recommend something like this just in general, but this still isn't gonna filter out things like viruses. In order to filter out things like viruses, you've gotta be up in that MERV 16 range, which fortunately you can buy air filters that are that high of quality. In fact, that's what they use in hospitals and in laboratories. Now let's talk about an N95 mask. An N95 mask, as the name implies, filters out 95% of particles that are 0.3 microns or bigger. Now, wait a minute, we, we talked about earlier that the coronavirus is actually 0.12 microns. That's smaller than what an N95 mask can actually filter out. Now, the fact is these viruses aren't just floating in the air, they're actually encapsulated in water molecules. They're actually being sneezed and coughed. They're being aspirated into the air inside of water molecules and water molecules are closer to the five micron range. So what you really need is something that prevents air and moisture mixed together from getting through the filter media. And that's why an N95 mask works well for viruses that are encapsulated in water molecules. It also means we don't have to get down to that 0.12 micron in order to be sufficiently able to filter those out from a coronavirus mask. That also answers some of the questions people have had about FDM or additive manufacturing used in 3D printing. Now, if you're 3D printing with something like PLA, PLA does have very tiny micro fissures. Once you start printing with things like PETG, those micro fissures start to get smaller. I'll give you an anecdotal piece of evidence here for this. When I print out a vase using something like PLA, it leaks water right away. You can fill it up and you can actually see water seeping out of it. That tells me it's not going to filter out viruses that are encapsulated in water molecules. Now with PETG, for example, on the other hand, I've printed out plenty, probably a hundred at this point, orchid pots that I designed, and it actually blocks out water. It doesn't leak water. 
So that tells you that if you print these properly using PETG, you're much safer than if you're printing with PLA. I'm not gonna guarantee that, of course, there are no micro fissures present that a virus could get through, but as long as you're 3D printing with multiple perimeters, and the perimeters are the outside layers of a 3D object, so if you print with three to five perimeters around an object, you're gonna have three to five layers of that 3D printed filament that an object would have to penetrate in order to get through. And that makes it far less likely for someone to get infected by this. So if you're looking for a filter material to actually filter out the virus or stop the water droplets from entering your airway, you need to cut up either an N95 mask, which you can use to cut multiple 3D printed masks out of. You can use polypropylene, assuming it's properly rated, or you can use at least a MERV 16 or higher rated air filter. And I'll drop a link to one of those as well that we've been seeing from the Bolivar guys. They can cut around 100 masks out of one of these filters, and they're, they're not cheap by any means, but they are effective and they do the job well.